I won't watch a video that has bad sound. I just, I cannot bring myself to do yeah. it. Uh, at the end of the day, the video is a medium that engages two senses, yeah. and so both have to be good. But it also in invokes in people's gut feel. You know, so you'll, you'll judge from this video watching us if you like us or not, and that's so cool. I'm so cool with that. You can, well, you wouldn't even be listening this far in. You would have switched off after 10 or 15 seconds. As if they don't like us. I, well, that's why I'm being so confident in coffee. <laughs> Welcome to Connected with Melissa J. Scott. Today's guest we have is James Lopez <laughs> from Arkshot Media and Heretic Creative Agency, which is our new agency that we have together. More about that later. The reason why I've got James on today is because some of you may actually already know him. He is an extraordinary videographer, cinematographer, but I would even go as far to say he's a bit of a marketer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you are. That's your point yeah. of difference, I think, from most other videographers. Mm. And that's why I got you on today to speak about, like, everybody knows that they should be using video in their marketing and the way that they um, put their personal brand forward. There's huge stats, like 80% of the entire internet these days is video. But what I wanted to talk today about is actually how to create engagement, how to connect better with your audience, how to do that through um, video marketing. But also I wanted to touch on because being connected is also the whole theme of this podcast is about being connected to yourself and to your audience. And you've got a really interesting story about how you even started in video. And I think that's worthwhile sharing. <laughs> you want to start right back at the beginning? Well, yeah, because you do what a lot of people want to do. You've done what a lot of people want to do is they've gotten out of their day-to-day -day life that they weren't enjoying and you're now creating your passion and you're following your heart. Mm, so not, not so. a lot of people get to do that. People admire you for that and you bring that with you. You know, you bring all the traits of your past and your careers with you. So I reckon that's a cool place to start. Yeah, no, okay, that's cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, for 25 years I worked in heavy industry, as mm. you know. Uh-huh. Um, Various jobs around a, a steelworks. I worked in ultimately in a blast furnace, uh, and I ended up being a shift supervisor. I had a crew of thirteen guys. Um, it's, What's a blast furnace? Sorry, a blast furnace <laughs> makes molten iron yeah. at one thousand five hundred degrees Celsius. See from Wollongong. That's a very Wollongong thing to do. Yeah, not a lot of people in Wollongong work in a blast furnace, but <laughs> oh, I thought the steelworks was a big part. Okay, I thought it was yeah, a big part it used of to be, culture. Yeah, not so much anymore. I think there's probably around about. I think three and a half thousand employees. There was two hundred and fifty thousand employees once upon a time, or one hundred and twenty-five thousand, or something. Yeah. So, but that was your expected path, wasn't it? When you left school, it was kind of like following I'm in the family tradition. From a long line of steelworkers, so both grandfathers, yeah. uncles, father, everybody worked in the steelworks. Very hard to buck that tradition. I I, I tried. Yeah. But yeah, ended up getting sucked in, and the money, the dollars. I mean, that you get sucked yeah. in by the dollars, you know. Um, mm. Ultimately, I guess you understand that or rationalise that it's, it's not actually all about the dollars. It's about mm. being happy and following your dream. Exactly, which is kind of like what this whole podcast is about, which is why you're just like a perfect person to speak on it. So then what did you do? Basically, you're in the steelworks, but you knew that there was more inside of you than just, you know, running this team of guys and yep. making metal. <laughs> so Making metal flow like water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whatever you're doing, yeah. I, 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 I'd, um, I guess I, I, the, I, I chased some sort of creative outlet for a long time. So 20 years ago, I was a guitarist in the band. I was a songwriter. I got to tour. I got to play. Um, that was the dream for a while. I thought that mm. that could be my, you know, I guess you perceive it as a ticket out, don't you, in terms yeah. of... But it was your sanity at the time as well. It was very much, yeah, mm. very much so. So that was very much an outlet. I got to do some really cool things, you know, touring with NXS and Deep Purple and all that sort of stuff was amazing. You know, going around the world was incredible. Mm. Um, How old were you when you were doing that? About 30. Mm. Yeah, so it was about, yeah, about 20 years ago. Just so you got a taste years. then of life outside of that expected career. Yes, very much so. Mm. Um, it didn't eventuate and I guess at the end of it, I walked away comfortably knowing that I'd had a, a red hot crack at it, but it wasn't. Mm. Like going so many to be people the in the music industry, yeah, it's very hard to. It's easy to do it as a hobby and as a, a fun project, but to make an actual career and support a family because you had a family to do that, it you know you 
had to marry the two together. What happened after that? Because you can't sort of live that dream life and live that creative passion, I believe, and live that creative passion and then just go back to life as it was. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I guess always having that creative bent, eventually you start to feel like you're starting to fly apart sort yeah. of thing. And um, it was, I, I guess it was, I'd received uh, a little bit of uh, advice to su suggest that maybe I consider jumping on the other side of a camera. Mm. And I, I poo-pooed the idea initially because I, <laughs> I hated cameras. I, I don't just the little cameras, you know, handy cam things yeah, sort of yeah. thing. And this there was, about was 15 years ago, maybe, or 10 years ago? Uh, or? I reckon, no, longer, 12 to 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, probably about 12 years ago, I think. So you started off as a hobbyist. I, I just messed around with this little thing that I had and, and uh, I started playing on Windows Movie Maker, which at the time Windows yeah. computers just had it as a, a little app that was part of the, the operating system. It was incredibly limiting, but it set something off inside me. Yeah. And I started employing children then to kind of just... <laughs> I just started telling little stories, just writing little scripts and yeah. doing all sorts of mental things to their school videos and other oh, sorts of Oh, you weren't one of those fathers, were you, where they were turning up with the most extraordinary video projects that they'd done? No, 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 no. <laughs> it was just more a case of the, trying to turn the home movies into something yeah. that people would actually watch rather yeah. than... Here's three hours of crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and we're all going to sit through and pretend that we're of enjoying sliding it. sliding images, which I know you hate. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it was, it was, um, yeah, it was more a case of just wanting to make them entertaining and interesting. Yeah. And I did. That's and, cool. and people were actually watching it and really enjoying it. And so it, it went from strength to strength. Due to my musical pedigree, I knew enough yeah. people in bands and that sort of stuff that I went and filmed a couple of... So I was going to ask, how, how does it become a hobby? Because I reckon that's what everyone wants to know. When does the hobby become the, like a, a, you think this can become a career path? Yeah, oh, look, I, I guess at the time, I had enough connections in the music industry. Still, there was a, a guy who owned a series of rehearsal rooms in Wollongong called Arnie Albright, who was yeah. a sort of friend of, friend of mine. Um, and I hit him up because he still ran the rehearsal rooms and I said I had some cards and some flyers could I drop them off I was going to get into video uh, he got very excited it was one of those timely things where uh, he said I've actually got a music video I want to shoot myself and why don't we just do it with you and I sort of went okay uh, crapped myself <laughs> because it was a first paid gig I love the first job I remember my first job <laughs> and I looked at the it, it's like I, I you and I are both hard on ourselves with regard to... Yeah, yeah we're tough critics. And, and, and that's how you improve. Yeah, you know, that's what so makes I, you good. Yeah, yeah, and so I looked at... You know, I, I don't ever revisit anything that I'd done 10, 11 years ago because <laughs> it's, it's cringeworthy. I can see it in my mind's eye, that's enough. It's yeah, pretty yeah, horrible. Yeah. But it certainly drove me to understand cameras better, to understand techniques better, to research constantly, to mm. just constantly improve and drive and, and focus... Yeah, so you got a taste, and then you just something shifted in you, or just kind of like this is my future. Uh, yeah, but I still didn't have the self belief. Well, that's interesting. So at the time, I was suffering quite low self esteem. I'd, I'd gone through sort of about a bout of clinical depression. Mm. Um, fortunately for me, I found some amazing support and help. I was seeing a lovely counsellor at the time. Mm. Uh, so long story short, we kind of moved through all that sort of stuff. I got the tools that I needed to get back on track. Yeah. And there was that moment where self-belief, I was reinvigorated, which just, you know, this is the universe, just sort of going, all right, it's time. Mm. And my boss came up to work, uh, came up to my, my shift. I was starting a night shift, my boss came up. And he said, all right, I've got letters for voluntary redundancy. Mm. And it was an instantaneous, I gave it absolutely no thought. You know, almost 25 years. I was three months short of 25 years uh, in Blue Scope Steel. Surely you get a watch or something for that? Mm, you got to wait for three months. If I'd, if I'd hung for three months, I would have got the watch. The watch. Uh, <laughs> and they asked if I wanted that, and I just sort of went, mm, yeah, I'm not caring too much yeah. about the watch. <laughs> um, but I, I tore the envelope apart, got the letter out, signed it, and I gave yeah. it back to him. I remember saying to him, if, if you value me in any way, shape, or form, you'll get me out of here as soon as possible. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, 
two weeks later, I was gone. October 21st, 2011. Because you even had, I remember, yeah, well done. I remember you actually telling me a story about when, uh, you, I don't even know how many years you'd been there and they did all these personality tests of all the people working in there and they actually pulled you into the office and had a little chat to you about how you really were. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to tell a little yeah, bit Yeah, yeah, so we, we did a Myers-Briggs uh, personality test, which you can do online these days, mm. as you know, because mm. you and I are... The same. Exactly the same. Funny. Um, <laughs> so there are 16 different personality types yeah. to varying degrees. So it's not saying that there's exactly 16 kinds, but if you're extroverted, you're extroverted to some degree, or if you're introverted, you're introverted to some degree. There are 16 personality types, Myers-Briggs mm. asserts. Mm. Uh, what they were looking for is a personality type called an ISTJ, which is someone who follows direction really well, doesn't question a lot of stuff, they follow procedures, they're very diligent, all that sort of stuff. Um, Myers-Briggs also asserts that for every personality, there's an op opposite personality. <laughs> yeah. And my personality, your personality as well. <laughs> Uh, is the exact opposite of that. So we don't follow <laughs> direction and procedures terribly well. And that's, yeah. I guess, part of the art of being creative. I was going to say, that's the creative process, is to problem solve and to find different ways to do things. Exactly. You're sitting in this heavily regulated industry job where safety and following rules is... Paramount. ...is the life. Is Absolutely. life. And you saw some horrific things when people didn't follow rules. Oh, or, and even or, when they did, just... Any, yeah, stuff happens. Yeah, there, there's there's incredible amount of risk in the place. And mm. so the rules existed for a reason, and I'm not yeah. saying yeah, yeah. that, that, uh, that you know, and I did follow them and all the rest of it, but I, I, I challenged, I Everything. guess, a lot. <laughs> but it just wasn't the right environment for you, yeah. No, it wasn't. Um, and the guys who successfully worked there and happily worked there um, just have saying. the personality type to, yeah. to enhance and assist and make these things better and all that kind of thing. Yeah. But they're just better suited to the industry than I ever was. And so mm. um, ultimately, so my manager at the time read my results out to me and said, I kind of think, oh, he asked if I, if I was feeling like a square peg in a round hole. That was 11 or 12 years into my career. Oh my gosh. So halfway yeah. between, when, between when I finally kind of got the courage to leave. Uh, and I said, yeah. And I, I, I remember feeling quite emotional at the time, sort of thinking, yeah, you know, and um, he said, well, this is why. Don't feel bad because there are roles that are probably yeah. better suited to your kind of personality. We just sort of need to find them. Unfortunately for me, I kept following the money and staying on shift and all that sort of ah, stuff. Ah, okay. Yeah, so. So fast forward. Yes. You've left. You're a videographer. I am. You have yes. a very successful business in Sydney. Yes. One of the toughest marks. So you actually had a business in Adelaide, which was a relatively good market to crack. And then you came to Sydney mm -hmm. and... Much tougher market to crack. Very much so. Yeah, in yeah. Incredibly competitive. Uh, in a lot of ways, the Sydney market's quite ruthless. Yeah, I would agree, yeah. Um, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere in Australia. I believe that. I think uh, I've learned the hard way that to, to do the discount thing, uh, that's desperate. That's uh, desperation. Yeah. If you Suicide. Just, if, if you back yourself and you treat people the way that you wish to be treated, mm. they will come. Yeah. So you did. You actually really got a lot of your new clients through LinkedIn, didn't you? Back in the before people jumped on LinkedIn, you were really did a lot of um, networking through that. Yes, I have done uh, probably for about ten years. I think LinkedIn's been a, like a really good source. Yeah. And it wasn't until we had the discussion about it that I really put two and two together because yeah. uh, I was thinking, oh, it's Facebook, it's LinkedIn, it's a Instagram's complete crap for me for you any sort of, yeah it's, for me personally instagram yeah um facebook to a lesser degree uh but still pretty like pe people will kick your tires on facebook or, but they, they don't From generally sort of follow yeah. through generally speaking in, in my industry in my experience but linkedin gave me a really good platform in terms of making solid connections and talking with people yeah um, and as clunky as it is, and as sort of unkind as the interface kind of is, it at least has the messaging capability. And I, I guess I always felt that if I could, out of the hundred messages you send, you might get ten responses. Out of the ten responses, you might get three that kind of say, "Yes, yeah. you're coming yeah. in, and let's have a chat." And I, and I just know from experience that if I get those three to say, "Come in and have a chat," and I come in and I meet with them. 
the very first comment I generally get from people is, Jesus Christ, you're passionate about what you do. Yeah, yeah. So I was going to ask you, what's your secret sauce? Because I know what your points of difference are, but I love asking you that question. <laughs> love putting you on the spot. I think you should answer it because well, I struggle a bit know. with it. Well, everyone should know what their point of difference is because yeah. that's all you... And you talk to clients about this all the time. Mm. And that's your point of difference is that I said at the beginning, you're like a marketer. So you value ad by far more than the average videographer. And I think anybody in business needs to be able to value add to what they do. So mm. you might be whatever it is that you do, but you need to have more up your sleeve to stand out, to create value and to, you know, for people to really choose you. One thing I've always done, rightly or wrongly, is I've never, never, ever, ever looked at what my competition does. I love that. That's such good advice. It's just because you can get caught in an absolute web of self-doubt it's just it's well it's not even that so much it's more a case of i, I think you confine yourself and you constrain yourself if you if you thought this, this is what my perceived competition's doing mm. therefore that's kind of what i probably should be doing as well and so because i've not ever stumbled across that definition of what anybody else does in my field yeah i've managed to evolve my own my own kind of thing and so when you sort of said to me, you add so much value by yeah. storyboarding and scripting and all that sort of stuff, and do you know how many videographers I know that who don't do that? They just point the camera and click, whereas you will sit down with a client, Never you'll be talking that. about marketing and you'll be talking about their branding. What's their points of difference? Questions that they've never been asked before, unless they're dealing with me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, um, but often like things that people aren't asked and, and it's, so let's talk about video then, because you know that's your passion, that's what you do. Mm. So you know, that's a good lead into what makes a really good video, and what what should business owners be looking for? Because everybody knows they should be creating video. We've got all the stats. Like I was just looking at them before. That's why I keep turning, turning to my computer. Seventy eight percent of people watch videos online every week. Fifty five percent watch every day. Yeah, that's crazy numbers. Eighty percent of the internet is dedicated to video. There's some other huge, 95% of information retained um, when you look at something on a website is through video. Only 10% is through words. So yep. we're all about connection and impactful storytelling in our agency together. Yes, we are. Yeah, so what, you know, what can we tell business owners from a video point of view? What can they do to really stand out and not just make shitty video, yep. which a ton is out there? Oh, yes, it is. And this is the problem these days is that is it 300 hours of video is uploaded every minute? Is yeah, that? Yeah, 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 well, that's exactly right. Yeah, so, so there's so much crap. So much content. And we're all online. being told to shove content yeah. out there. But all you're doing is you're just, you're just adding to the, the giant hairball. It's just a big, <laughs> disgusting mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be. You've in got to that cut category. through. You have to cut yeah. through. Um, so another few statistics, which um, which we've discussed at length Love as well. Statistics. Uh, you have ten seconds to engage. Mm. If you're advertising on YouTube, you've got five seconds to engage because mm. there's that skip ad that comes up before the video plays. And mm. so, if you don't engage that five seconds, the rest of the video is pointless. Uh, mm. Just don't even bother. Mm. So five to ten seconds, depending on the medium that you're advertising on, you have to hit them with something interesting. So a real pattern interrupt. Absolutely, yeah. yes, a pattern interrupt. Mm. Um, yeah, again, I'm not big on specials and I don't think it's about that. You, you don't want to date the video with some sort of kind of special or, or, yeah, or deal no. or whatever. No. Um, so in some way sort of connect. And so we, we've talked at length about connection marketing, which mm. is your very yeah. much your baby. Oh my God, yeah. Marry that up with impactful storytelling, create something really, really interesting that mm. still connects with your mm. audience when you know what that is and you're well on the way. And do that within the first five to ten seconds. <laughs> yeah. um, another statistic which is wonderful is, uh, and it's a little bit tragic, is that generally speaking, because all the videos online come with a duration attached and so we can decide whether or not we're going to invest the next minute or yeah. minute and a half of our life, yeah. 36 seconds is now the new video duration mm. that if you don't grab them in the first five to ten seconds you're lucky to keep them for 36. I mean if you look at your own stats when you have video and you look at it the amount it's very small percentage of people that will go through all the way to the end so you need to keep those videos short and succinct and clear to really yeah. 
just capitalize on, you know, people, they're giving you their time. That's the most precious asset anyone's got. Yep. So you've got to make it worthwhile. Yeah, absolutely yeah. right. Absolutely so right. So quality information. Like, give us some of the tips that, I, that you give our clients now about how to actually, when you're writing the script and how to, to deliver, like how to actually create a, ski, a script. Because basically what will happen is I'll create a script. I even did it just today. Like we set up, we were shooting before. I create a script that this is this long and James comes through and then it, we <laughs> shrink it to this. And <laughs> but it's always better. It's, yeah, it's very much about, uh, I guess what, one thing people don't understand about video is that you can rewind it, you can play it again, you don't sort of watch it once and then it's delivered. It doesn't it's disappear. Off the face of the earth yeah. and gone forever. Like if there's a point, make your point once. Make the point once and if someone didn't quite get it, you know what, they can just go back to the 12 second mark and they can watch it again and they can hear that bit that you said. Make it clear. If you're going to do your own videos, you need good sound. Yeah. You absolutely need yeah. good sound. So we've got a lovely microphone here. It's a Rode, but it's good. Um, and it's groovy. You don't necessarily need to invest in all this sort of stuff. I mean, phones are amazing this, in this day and age. They're mm. incredible, but pick your times to shoot. Don't shoot yeah. in a windy situation or in a... In a Bad lighting. Or at a train station where there's a lot of racket. Like, you've really got to pick your time. Um, you, you can see yourself on camera, so you know if, you, if you're sort of doing mm. well. Uh, there's a whole bunch of apps uh, that will put a teleprompter on your phone so that if, if you're concerned about repeating yourself or saying too much, put your little script into your little teleprompter and then mm -hmm. you're just reading it straight off the phone. Like, you can do all this sort of stuff for next to nothing. Those apps are free. So you're a fan of teleprompters? I know there's a lot of people out there that are like, oh, keep it real, do your own, you know, just script, talk off the top of your head. Yeah, they're not for everybody. Mm. Um, Video comes down to preparation, and this is the thing I that agree. separates good from bad. If you just think you're gonna go out and just gonna shoot a video, and just, oh, I'm feeling good today, I'm just gonna shoot a video, you're gonna waffle for five to 10 minutes more than you need to, for starters. You're gonna make the same point over and over again because you think you're talking fluidly and specifically and all that sort of stuff, but you're just not. You need to <laughs> write down a script, and then you need to leave it for a, a day. Yeah, or an hour or two hours or whatever. And then revisit the script and then cut a whole bunch of stuff out where you've said the same thing. Mm. And we're not talking about different words, we're talking about the same content. If the content's the same but the words are different, get rid of the ones that sound the worst. Mm. Keep it simple. Yeah. So we, what do they say? They say you should be sort of writing a script that kind of is able to be read by, is it a sixth grade, sixth grade yeah, a student? 12 year old. A 12 year old, yeah. 12 year old child. So they could repeat back, basically you say the script to them, you told me this, and then they can repeat back um, what it meant. They don't have to repeat it word for word, but they can actually interpret what it meant and then repeat it back to you. They understand the content of what you're yeah. trying to, what you're trying to get across. Uh, so things like that are really important. Um, then you know, once you've kind of got all that done and you want to put it on a teleprompter, look, teleprompters are good, some people look like they're reading, mm -hmm. and the reason they look like they're reading is because they're not comfortable in front of the camera. Mm. Um, we've all been there mm. at, a, at, a, yeah, at that place where we're not comfortable in front of the camera, and it's just practice. It really is practice. Like when I first started speaking in front of a camera, it is mortifying, and it is, it's just like public speaking. You just have to keep doing it over and over and over again, and then you just come to realise one day it's just really plastic. For the yeah. lens. Well, absolutely. But the other thing to consider is that we, all our first videos are shit. They are. Everybody's <laughs> first videos are shit. Join the ranks of people who have shit videos. You know, yeah. Have your own shit videos, learn from them, <laughs> and get better. Because I guarantee the next one quickly. will be less shit. And just do it quickly. And the next one will be yeah. less shit. And the next one will be less shit. Yeah. The wonderful thing about social media is if you're really offended by the first crappy video you've done, delete it. Like, yeah. But there's no excuse to not start. Um, and if you take these tips, you can avoid it being as shit as possible. That you can avoid oh, all you, the shit. Oh, if you, know? you hit the ground running and you're there yeah. instead of here, so then prepare, more power to you. You prepare. You know what you're going to say. And another tip that we have, that which we do with clients and we do with ourselves, is that we just feed the line, the next line, the next line, the next line to our, each other. We don't try and learn, you know, two or three paragraphs off by heart. We have our things written in short, succinct sentences. Yeah. <laughs> no, say? no, I'm just thinking a, a professional presenter will, will learn two or three paragraphs. Yeah, you know, and that's their job. That's their skill. That's not our job, not our task. And particularly yeah. if we're you know, invoking connection marketing, Yeah. it very much is about you as the business owner appearing and, and, and creating that kind of connection with your, with your audience. Uh, in which case, you know, 
99% of you aren't presenters and aren't ever going to be, but you can mm -hmm. certainly appear really nicely in front of a camera and you can you know, relate and engage. And I'm glad you brought that up because that's the whole premise of connection marketing is actually where a company puts the person from the company at the front of the business and uses their personal brand to sort of get people to connect with them because people are going to connect far more with a human being you know, that oh, they can touch and feel and experience rather than just, you know, some sort of corporate face or, or some Instagram influencer or just some random actor who will just sell their soul for the ne to the next person. You know, we, we, we've moved past all of that. We're not impressed by any of that. So as a business owner, you can have far more impact just practicing and getting better at presenting and doing your own videos. And you've worked with some clients that are like sensational presenters. They're almost professional absolutely but yeah. it, it's funny as well though i mean again like yourself and myself they're very much about raising the bar every single time yeah and so yeah. The, you know there's one guy in particular i thought he was actually amazing to start with yeah uh, he was very very hard on himself now he's beyond amazing and he still thinks that he's only adequate so oh yeah he's yeah, always going to cool. keep pushing the bar he's always going to keep improving because he kind of has that mindset and it's not about beating yourself up it's just about learning and improving learning and improving it's that cycle so, why don't you give us an example of a video which has had extraordinary results for the company that you did it for? Okay. Um, well, there was, a, there was a real estate agent I did a bit of work for in Adelaide yeah. who had what was essentially the unsellable house. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was okay, but it was, it was um, a couple going through a bit of divorce. Um, they wanted more money for the home than perhaps the market was actually saying it would get. There was some repair work going on at the property as well at the same time. There were, there were a lot of challenges. Mm. Um, and so he, he was giving me carte blanche to come up with something interesting, which is like waving a red rag to a bull. <laughs> um, and so I wrote... Did he know who he was dealing with he at did. the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd, we'd, we'd worked a few times already and, and come up with some pretty cool things. Because saying you, like, just come up with anything, like... Yeah, that was that was me just kind of my eyes rolled back in my head and I thought, <laughs> I may have swooned, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. So I wrote a rap. Um, As you do. which covered off on all the salient features of the house. When I say rap, it was just a rhyming a simple rhyming poem to a, a drum beat loop. Like it, it really yeah. like I'm not a rap artist. I'm Can you perform it now? Hell no. I, I no <laughs> oh, good seven or eight years ago I have I no bet you clue. still remember it. <laughs> <laughs> it's on YouTube still, as far as I know. I'm looking it up. Um, so we, we, I got him around. Uh, we did a line at a time. He's as bad a rapper as I am, but we just, you know, we weren't being serious. We weren't being artists. We were just yeah, you know, trying you're just to, trying to have. It's a parody, having a bit of fun. Yeah. So we we, we recorded the rap. Um, on the day, he brought in um, a, a girl that he knew. She was dressed sort of skimpily. He was dressed kind of as a rap artist. He took one of my caps and he butchered it. He really cut into it and had it back on backwards and had bling, plastic bling on and all that sort of stuff. Um, and so we, we shot a rap video. Yeah. And so the girl was on the, on, the, on the bed in the master suite, you know, throwing $50 notes up into the air. It was, it was every cliche that I could think of in terms of a rap video we exploited. And this is a real estate property video? This was a real estate property video. Okay, how did it go down? Um, within a week, and I'm talking seven or eight years ago, within a week, 25,000 hits, which was That's unheard of at the time. huge numbers back then. Absolutely unheard yeah, of. Yeah, huge. Um, he copped a lot of hatred online because the rap artists of the world at the time <laughs> took great offence to what we were doing and, and sort of felt they didn't that get we the were, joke? were taking... Well, they, I think that they thought we were putting him forward as a rap artist. Like, we absolutely were not. Like, he, he, wow. he loves being a real estate agent. He's very good at being a real estate agent. He was just doing something a little bit different. So the hate actually made it go viral, didn't it? The majority of shares, I feel, were yeah. from people who hated it and they were sharing it sort of <laughs> saying... Check out these idiots. But they just didn't get the joke. Well, the, prob the, the, the beautiful thing about, and this is what a lot of people don't understand about virality, is that if you're not getting hatred, it's not going to be viral. I, I know what you're saying because not, it's impossible for everybody to love what you do. It's impossible. So if everybody does love what you do, they're just, you're just in your small little circle of lovers. Hmm. And so you're not reaching out and going 
further afield, are you? It's a really good point that you just bring up because that's what everybody fears. That's exactly right. But the thing is, yeah. every hater that shares it, guaranteed that amongst their circle, there are going to be some people who love it. Yeah, they'll think it's fine. They'll get the joke. They'll say it was no big deal. So continue on. That was, so, great. That was a great point. So, yeah, so 25,000 hits got him and me on Today Tonight in a really good way. <laughs> like, the story was wonderful. So that's helping your business now. It, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so they wanted to know what made me tick, and to this day, we still don't know. It's, it's a little bit scary up there <laughs> we sometimes. We don't want to know. We probably don't want to know. Um, and then it got him on Sunrise. So he got nationwide exposure through the Sunrise. So now his personal show. brand is exploding. Yeah. That's incredible. So what, did he sell the property? Sold the property in, I think it was three or four weeks for, I think it was 20 or 30 grand more than the elevated price that they were asking wow. for. Wow. So the unsellable property sold. You've gotten exposure and more clients. His personal brand, he's now known all over. He was known all over Adelaide. He ended yeah. up leaving the company that he worked for, not because there was any bad, bad blood or anything, but because he was actually able to then go out in business on his own, and yeah. he did. I believe he's still in business for his for So himself. he became known as the guy that does the crazy videos and got like a whole fan base of people who then like would use him as a... They very much embraced. Yeah. So I would turn up for subsequent shoots with him down the track like months later, and I, I would hear the vendor saying to him, uh, I can't wait to see what you do with our property. So <laughs> I've shot him as Darth Vader. He, 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 yeah, we've done some mental, men, crazy, crazy. And this things. is, I've got to keep saying, this is a real estate agent in Adelaide, not like, you know, some fancy pants city. It's Adelaide. And he's just having fun with it, not yeah. taking himself seriously, which is the message, isn't it? Yeah, but, but, but very much in a connection way, the things that totally. you talk about with regard to attracting the people to him who understood him and his brand and wanted him and his brand. So a lot of people poo-pooed what he did, and that's cool. He wasn't after their business. Well, because now, this is the whole point of connection marketing. Now he's actually got something hmm. that people can connect to, and he's got the point of difference. Like how, when you think about that industry, real estate agents, like this is your age-old problem, how do you make a real estate agent different to another real estate, a real estate agent? Like, you know, they all just say the same and promise the same things. So this guy went out on a limb and actually was, you know, he promised creativity, he promised some extent of virality in his videos because they were interesting to watch. It had a point of difference and he stood for something which was like a real fun element, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very much so. Yeah, yeah, so we were talking about that before. Is that authentic or not? Because he's dressing up and playing a character. He's playing a role, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I guess you're right. In he's terms of... doing it from the heart. He's, he's believing in what he's doing. Mm. He's not hurting anybody. He's not making fun of anybody. Not at all, never. Um, yeah. So he's not being a bad soul. People are totally embracing what he's doing. It's totally connection. Yeah, I, I, I saw one of his videos uh, a couple of weeks ago. He's still going strong, and he was Woody from Toy Story. He, oh my God! Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's brilliant. awesome. And Absolutely like, you know, brilliant. And that's what it's all about. So, and that probably leads in really beautifully to what I want to talk about because we come face to face with so many business owners, and you might be one of these people now, just going, "Yeah, well, that's fine for him," you know whatever reason and story you've concocted in your own mind why it's fine for him and not for you. Now, I'm not going to dress up as any stupid character either, but having said that, we've just finished a, a beautiful creative video that we've shot yes. for our new agency, which we're about to launch at the time of this video, and that's totally like a fantasy kind of story melded back in. A fractured fairy it's tale. It's a fractured fairy tale, you know? <laughs> we got actors to do the bits because, you know, we're not going to do those. Um, and it would have been weird if we did it anyway. It would have been like dress-ups. And that's where the authenticity comes in. So we use some actors. But the storyline and the message, it's all about creativity and being different. Yes. We're in the game of selling creativity. So then why shouldn't our video that represents our company and our brand scream creativity? You know, mm. we just want to stand out. And I feel, I'm jumping on my little soapbox, <laughs> I feel that's where people are really not doing it well with their business in these kind of times, everybody, you touched on it before when you said you don't look at what your competitors are doing. And I think that's awesome because you get caught up in the mind shit of what are they doing and oh, I'll look silly if I do that. And I used to have massive head trash around what other people were doing because I found they were more articulate, they spoke with bigger words, they used a lot of industry jargon, and then and that stopped me from doing presentations for a long time. Yeah, right. Until I find yeah, I haven't shared that with you. Until yeah. I finally started doing presentations and then I get the most beautiful feedback was what you said about before with presenting to video about it's got to be 
that a 12 year old can repeat the concept back to you. So I was told time and time again, God, you just break it down, you make it so simple for me. I love that, mm. thank you very much. That was an absolute Mission accomplished, game right? changer yeah. for me. So I just want to share that, and I'm sure you feel exactly the same way. You know, you get really frustrated when we, because you're faced with it a lot, where business owners really should be at the front of their business. If not the business owner, then like the head salesperson or, you know, the head of, that's doing the brand management, somebody that's the face of the company from the company, mm -hmm. not somebody paid, not like an Instagram influencer who's here today, gone tomorrow and flogging 50 other products at the same time. Oh, David Beckham's notorious for that. Like, <laughs> no. the comedians now take the absolute piss out it's of... It's become a joke. ...the fact that he just sells everything. So every brand yeah. he represents, it's a bit of a laugh. Yeah. That, you know, and, and he's the one laughing all the way to the bank. But, you know, the integrity behind that is, it's really disappointing. So, you know, you don't have to be a superstar, and I guess that's your point, isn't it? Absolutely right. Yeah, far better to hear from someone at the, at the, you know, in the industry themselves, the CEO, the, yeah. the business owner, whoever it is, yeah. because that's then giving your audience, like the guy in Adelaide, the chance to connect with them, with you. Yeah, the person behind the brand, you know, and also you don't have to deal with then what's happening, you know, if you're using a famous footballer and then all of a sudden they've fallen into disrepute, you know, you don't have to just clean up all of the mess. Well, it's, yeah, it's just, it, it, it's, I think that, that that style of advertising, it should be dead. I think it was far more prevalent 20, 30 years ago. It'd be the, yeah, back in the days when yeah. sex sold as well. Well, you even know. 10 years ago, you know? It's yeah, it's really... just, it's all changing, it's all shifting. And much, I saw a wonderful ad for, a, I think it was an oat milk company out of Sweden. Um, and it was the most bizarre thing I've ever seen in my life. It was just this, this oat field, I don't know, barley field, whatever, oats, barley, whatever, whatever. I don't field, even know how oats are. Paddock. But in the middle of this of this field, there's a guy playing this little keyboard, and I can't remember the, the, the concept or the content per se, but this beautiful camera shot moving through the field over the, the oats, barley, whatever, getting closer to this guy, and he's playing to the oats, and it was the CEO of the company. That's gorgeous. And it's yeah. kind of like, yeah, at least yeah, that little video put, put a, you know, he became the face yeah. of their company. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, They've done a whole bunch of other things which have been very confronting to the dairy industry. Mm, um, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But again, they've been notoriously brave in terms of their marketing but, and, and their that's beliefs. such a good example because they're breaking into an absolutely decades and decades and decades of strong marketing around how we all need to eat dairy. Mm. You know, it's an absolute strong belief. It's, um, and we don't even know where it came from. It's just the power of suggestive marketing. And so now they're trying to break through. So they have to do pattern interrupts and they have to do really strong, heartfelt things coming from the CEO because they're just like yeah. operating on the tiny budgets, I dare say, from the actual dairy industry itself. That's really like innovation and really getting their message home as sincerely as possible to connect to the people that are, you know, at the forefront of the change. It's critical. Oh, absolutely. And, and we've, we've said this a million times in terms of uh, yeah, if you've got to fluff a video up with millions of dollars of special effects and ah, all the rest of it, like yeah. it, it, it's stupid. Like at the end of the day, a succinct, earnest, beautiful, clever, original story yeah. will trump all that crap and cost you next to nothing. Yeah. Yeah, comparatively. Yeah. So tell your story. Yeah. Tell your story. Or get us in to help you tell your story. Like it's it's So what are your top tips then? Wrapping up, like sort of like the big James's top tips about how to do video really well. Like we were talking about all those huge wow. numbers of videos that get uploaded every every hour, every minute to YouTube. Yeah. They're all blending into sort of same same. The giant furball. Yeah, yeah. so I we're not so running with that. <laughs> I know, it's a good one. It's a good visual. You know, we're not saying everybody has to be stupidly and crazily, uh, no. off, you know, off the cuff. Don't shoot videos with your pants off. It's just not necessary. You're trying to get a cheap laugh or something, it's just ludicrous. <laughs> okay, T tip number one. Pants on. Pants on. Pants on's good. Tell your story, tell it succinctly, yeah. write your script, write it again. Share it with a brains trust, people who yeah. you trust. Speak it out loud. 
after you write that script. Speak it out loud because how many times do you write a script and then you kind of read yeah. it out loud and it makes no sense. You know, yeah, so. we speak so differently to how we write to read. It's, it's yeah. huge. So, you have to learn that. Yeah, speak it, time it, keep it succinct. Do you want to keep under a minute? We said 36 seconds before, but I, mm. I think a minute's still fairly safe provided you hit them in the first 10 seconds. Yeah, with a pattern interrupt. So a pa I, I keep using that. that, that is actually a jargon term. So a pattern interrupt is just something that is kind of like a jolt or a shock or a question um, that just kind of like, oh, shocks somebody into kind of like listening to you. So I talk about pain points a lot, you know, with marketing. So just really address what the person's pain is, what you know your target audience and just hit them with it straight up front. Ask the question, you know, is this affecting you? Is this changing your life? You know, really rather than going, hi, Melissa and James here, you know, and... and <laughs> First five seconds is gone, like, yeah, gone in no time flat. Totally gone, yeah. yeah. And also that perspective, you gave me a good tip before about trying to get the word you into the first yeah, 10 or 15 in, seconds, if that applies to First the sentence or two. Yeah, um, you as in the target audience. Yeah, address your constituency. So to, to address them personally or directly with a you, you know, the word you, mm. the word so I. So they feel like they're part of it. Yeah. Um, an interesting one, uh, which I think is quite important, we've not touched on this yet, but a lot of people are so uncomfortable in front of a camera that they'll, they would prefer an interview style mm. um, shot. And mm. so what I mean by an interview style shot is if I'm the interviewee and I'm talking about my product or whatever it is and I'm looking over there and I'm talking to a presenter about what my product is, I'm so not actually not engaging... Yeah. The camera. The camera, and therefore, that's my audience. I need to speak yeah, directly to yeah. my audience. So, if you're presenting your own videos, straight down the barrel of the lens. Look, look straight down it. You know. And what about some tips for if you're going to shoot your own about sound and light? Yeah. So, so pick your time, pick your place. Uh, the wonderful thing about a phone is that you can see yourself while you're doing it, mm. so you can see exactly how you look. You don't want shadows under your eyes. Mm -hmm. um, Look, if you're Instagramming, you use the phone this way. If you're YouTubing, use the phone this way. Mm. 1920 by 1080. Um, pick, uh, and be aware of sound. So before you leave yeah. the space, unless you're going to buy a microphone, I'm presuming you're going to use the sound on the phone, play it back, have a listen to it. Make sure that there's no wind shear, which is that Yeah, noise, bad sound you know. can destroy a video. And they said, I've read somewhere, bad sound is even worse than bad vision. I won't watch a video that has bad sound. I just, I cannot bring myself to do yeah. it. Uh, at the end of the day, the video is a medium that engages two senses. Uh, I can't wait for scratch and sniff videos because then it'll be three. <laughs> but until then, it's, you know, it's sight and sound. Yeah. And so both have to be good. But it also in invokes in people's gut feel. You know, so you'll, you'll judge from this video watching us if you like us or not. And that's so cool. I'm so cool with that. You can, well, you wouldn't even be listening this far in. You would have switched off after 10 or 15 seconds. As if they don't like us. I, well, that's why I'm being so confident and cocky. <laughs> but, but, you know, and that's the whole point. With mm. video, you get the opportunity to plaster it all over your website. But it's, what I love about video the most is when people come to me, they've been all over my website or my social media, they've heard me, they've checked me out for months, sometimes years devoured the content. Um, I try to keep it really high quality. I hope you've learned a lot today. I mean, my whole goal for every piece of content I put out is to be helpful and not fluff and not repetitive. Um, I try to present it as naturally as possible and as friendly as possible because that's my brand and my personal... And your nature. And, and my nature. I am exactly like this when you meet me. You're exactly like this when you meet you. And that's really critical. Never fake and be something you're not. Absolutely right, 100%. Yeah, yeah just get comfortable so you're not stilted in front of the camera. Hmm. And if, they, and if you still find that really too challenging, do some personal development because something's going on and like it will help you anyway. Absolutely. The second you're comfortable in your own skin, it seriously doesn't matter what you look like because you exude beauty and your confidence. Like you've it, warned, it, yeah, you've talked about that in the past, about how it's an, the camera's an amplifier and it can pick fake. Absolutely. Like, and it just magnifies it. Yeah. Mm. And so at the end of the day, a lot of us shouldn't be the judge of what looks good of our own videos, which is why I suggested the Brains Trust earlier, because yeah, yeah, yeah. people that you trust, you know, will, will hopefully sort of say, 
or I reckon you can do better. Not your fans, like people you can trust. Yeah, yeah. People who give you good. So a significant good, other, yeah. your children, people who, who aren't going to yeah. you know, fluff up your world with you know, false platitudes. Yeah. Um, get them to tell it. You want to hear it like it is. And if, if they say you look amazing, then believe them because yeah. why would they lie? And hopefully one day you see that. Yeah. Yeah. And it just you get comfortable. You just do. You really do. What's your final tip? Your final words of absolute well, wisdom. Uh, Oh, see, we've, we've cut off on so many of the, the most important I points. Um, look, if you could, ultimately, you could take it to another level by buying some good gear, but phones are just getting better all the time. And if, if you don't have the marketing budget to get the likes of us in, mm, mm. Just, just keep at it. You, you know, clean the lens before you start. Make sure that <laughs> <laughs> there's the finger grease all over it and that sort of yeah. stuff. But just, yeah, little bits and pieces. Trim it up at the start and the end. Get a logo done. You can go on Fiverr.com yeah. and you can get your logo animated for five bucks and mm. then stick that on the end of any of your videos moving forward as well. You know, it can cost you next to nothing, mm. but content is king and get it right. It's the best way to connect with people by far. You know, it's best to um, just go out on that limb. feels weird at the beginning, but your comfort zone will just expand and expand and expand the more you do it. Like I'm so comfortable in front of a camera now, it's crazy. Yes, you are. <laughs> Well, thank you, James. That was fantastic. I'm going to My ask pleasure. you one more question. If okay. you weren't a videographer, what would you be? Uh, wow. Uh, I wouldn't be designing graphics. <laughs> oh, God. No, you won't. Graphic designer. <laughs> Papyrus and Comic Sans are not allowed <laughs> in our studio. <laughs> Dear God. And if you guys are using them, please stop. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> uh, no, I'd probably be a guitarist still. I don't know. Yeah, ah, something creative. Yeah, I have to be. Yeah, have to be. It's, my thing. it's in my blood. Yeah, I'd be an artist and an author. And you still probably will. Be. I'm going to be. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. My pleasure. Really it's beautiful awesome. having you here on Connected, and look forward to seeing you guys next week. <laughs> All right.